today I'm going to show you a Jenkins demo and let's just dive right in. So what I have here is a simple Go project. Um, oops, a simple Go project. It's basically just like a web application that, um, that I've written a, a pipeline that's also written in Go for. And in this case, the pipeline is very simple. Um, I, have a, I have a function called CI and that's going to uh, basically lint, um, test, and then publish my container to a registry. So that's what this pipeline does. And of course, um, all these functions, like the test function is a separate function that I've written here uh, that um, grabs a source directory, mounts it, and then executes the go test command. And then the lint function is actually using a daggerverse module uh, by one of our lovely community members, Mark, called Golink CI lint, which basically grabs a directory and runs the linter on top of it. So I can run this pipeline locally. You know, I can run it locally, and everything is good. So this is what it looks like when I run it when I run it locally. Now I want to do this in Jenkins now. So um, uh, I've, I've noticed as I was looking through some of our documentation over the last few weeks, we do have some Jenkins examples here and there, but nothing uh, that uses Dagger module. So hopefully this serves as a nice overview of how to use a modular Dagger pipeline within a Jenkins pipeline. And I'm going to show two ways to do it. Uh, so the first way is where I have a Jenkins file that is incredibly simple. And there's just quite literally a single like call to Dagger where I'm calling the CI function that we just looked at that's doing that lint test publish. I'm calling the CI function with Jenkins and that's basically it. Like, so it's a single, a, a single stage um, pipeline and all the complexity and all the logic of what needs to happen as a part of my pipeline gets put into my dagger function and Jenkins kind of just serves as like the, a thin client for executing that function. And in this case, um, I also have a couple of environment variables here. So I specify the Dagger version, the path to where I want the binary to be installed. Because I'm publishing to a, uh, a, a Docker registry, I have my token in here, that's a secret in Jenkins. And then similarly, I'm sending the telemetry to Dagger Cloud. So I have a token in here for Dagger Cloud. But the pipeline itself is incredibly simple. I have a checkout that grabs the kind of source code and mounts the correct directories. And then I install that Dagger CLI and make it call it a Dagger. So I'm going to show you what this looks like within Jenkins. So here I have a Jenkins inst uh, instance that's running on my own kind of home server. And I can run this build. And if we look at the console output, you're going to see um, kind, of, kind of similar to what we saw just a, a few minutes ago in my terminal uh, within Jenkins. Um, and it's you know, that there's a couple of like weird symbols here. Um, and the good news is there, there is a way to see a slightly better view of this. So if you were to go into the Jenkins pipeline overview, now this is, I think, a plugin that, that gives you this capability, allows you to see the pipeline, but it's a part of like the standard recommended plugins for Jenkins. But if you go in the pipeline view, you'll notice one thing. One, your pipeline is incredibly simple. You basically have a single step called Dagger here that is executing your entire pipeline. And then if we go into there, there's two steps. There's a checkout, and then there is that call to Dagger call CI. And going in here, now the output looks a little bit cleaner. You're not going to see all of those uh, extra symbols, and you'll see some, um, some color coding and things of that nature. So it's a slightly better view of uh, of the world. So this is uh, what, we, what, what, what we just saw is kind of a recommended approach for, um, for Jenkins, in particular, if you're also using Dagger Cloud, because the biggest trade-off here is that your pipeline becomes very simple. There's a single step, and the Jenkins file is just calling Dagger. So all the complexity and all, all like the, the pathways that your pipeline is going to follow um, get, gets dumped into this one single step. So if you're using Dagger Cloud, you can get a much better view of all this. So if we go look in Cloud for a second, you'll see that there is this there is this trace, and this trace is the one that we were just looking at a few seconds ago within Jenkins. And um, rather than having just kind of big wall of of output, you now have um, a, a much better organized. Uh, view of all the different steps to your pipeline, all the inputs and the outputs for the various uh, phases and the various steps of the pipeline. And you can kind of follow it along. And, and it's especially useful when things are going wrong because um, you'll understand like all the inputs that went into uh, making that, that step fail. So that's kind of our, our general recommended approach that if you're using Jenkins modules, 
and Dagger Cloud, you should basically just wrap everything up in one entry point and then use the Dagger Cloud visualization to dig in and see what's going on. But there's also people that either uh, can't or, or, or don't want to or whatever, don't, don't want to use Dagger Cloud right now. Or a much more common scenario is you do want to use Dagger Cloud, but you're may, may, maybe not quite ready to replace your entire Jenkins configuration with a single call because that might entail having to rewrite you know, thousands of lines of Groovy into uh, a, 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 Dagger, a Dagger program. Um, and I think one of the nicest parts about Dagger is that we give you kind of like full flexibility and full choice on um, whether or not you want to bring the whole entire pipeline over or if you want to just grab maybe one step at a time, like maybe just grab that lint function, carve it out of your Jenkins Groovy, put that into Go, and then do it in a very piecemeal way. So this is also a totally valid approach um, that I'm showing you here. This is the same exact pipeline, but instead of having that CI entry point, I'm instead using Jenkins as, uh, using Jenkins pipelines as the uh, kind of structure and the shape of my pipeline and then calling those individual dagger functions instead. So rather than having CI wrap around lint test publish, I have uh, a step or stage called lint, which calls dagger call lint, a stage called test, which calls dagger call test, and so on. And, and in this case, yes, all these steps are using dagger, but it's a very common scenario where you have a bunch of Jenkins groovy still happening, but you grab one piece at a time and move it over to, uh, to dagger. So what does this look like within Jenkins? Um, if we go back to our lovely um, Jenkins UI, this is the same, this is a similar project, but this is using uh, that new uh, pipeline approach that we just saw. So if we looked into one of these builds, for example, you'll see going back to that console output, uh, it still looks just as messy as, as, as before. So I definitely recommend using that pipeline plugin. But if we look at the pipeline overview, it's much, much better. So now you'll see the pipeline is a little bit more com complex. So um, all that kind of logic is now moved into the Jenkins configuration. So I have the checkout, I'm installing Dagger, then I'm calling Lint, then I'm calling Test, and I'm calling Publish. And then if I go into one of these specific um, steps, you'll see uh, similarly, like the output looks much nicer because we, you know, we have the colors, we have, we have those weird symbols. And I can still see, you know, just like you can today, you have all the different steps of your pipeline. And then when there's a failure, I'm kind of honing into um, where the problem might lie. And then, um, and that's, you know, and this is a, a better way to see things in Jenkins if you don't want to wrap everything in a single call. This still does work with Dagger Cloud though. It just looks a little bit different. So if we were to look at this specific build in cloud, what you'll see is, well, first, um, any builds that are coming from Jenkins, you'll see this lovely uh, Jenkins logo within the CI traces part of the UI. And when you go in there, you'll notice that, you know, uh, the individual calls are now visible. So I have the C call, call to test, call to publish, um, and call to lint. This looks a little bit messy, unfortunately, because I, I'm like combining all these projects into one, <laughs> into, into one view. But um, in, in, in a real world scenario, you would either have like this one CI function or you would have these individual um, steps listed. And similarly here, uh, when I go into it, it's a very similar view that we just saw, but instead of showing you the whole entire pipeline, this is only showing you that lint function. Um, so we've seen how modular dagger pipelines fit into Jenkins and we did it two ways. One was just the one call to rule them all and the other one was uh, using still using some of the Jenkins pipeline structure, but replacing one step at a time all of the individual individual, individual uh, steps with the Dagger functions. Um, so that's the main thing I wanted to show today. I'm happy to answer any questions that people, folks might have. And looking into that, this I think uh, what the biggest thing, which is great to see the community agreeing on, is around you know at the once you start using Dagger, like the end goal is obviously to uh, you know, start deleting more and more Jenkins, which you, you've shown both approaches. Um, and I know you covered this a, a little bit already, Lev, but, um, and, and we we talked about this internally yesterday, as the approach, is there any additional advice you'd give someone if they're starting out with this of like how they, like how they should think about what they would daggerize first in their transition between dagger and Jenkins? Definitely, yeah. So I, I, our general recommendation is to find the thing that hurts the most and start there. So whether it's slow, um, 
or brittle or complex, like difficult to, or, or scary to change. I mean, the, we see some really interesting stuff uh, um, on, on a weekly basis um, of, you know, hundreds of lines of Groovy where people are just quite literally afraid to go make a change because they have no idea what's going to happen um, and, and, and they're not sure if they're going to be able to recover. So we definitely recommend starting with those things that are that are painful because it'll feel really, really great to solve them and it'll give enough motivation um, to keep going. So that's my general recommendation. And then I also recommend when you're actually writing your functions to just start as simple as possible because um, just like any other program, um, that you're writing, like day one, you know, you have your main function and it's got all the stuff just like baked in there. And then you f find that, you know, oh, I, I keep like copying, pasting this block of code to various places. So those are probably great, uh, great kind of candidates to become a standalone function. And then maybe you'll find yourself um, copying and pasting that function now around to various places. Those might be great candidates for a module that you publish out into the world so that you can reuse it across multiple projects. But I definitely wouldn't suggest starting with like the highest level of like ideal abstraction and modularity. I would keep it as simple as possible and then um, kind of extract from there as you see the need to do so. Awesome. Thanks for the advice, Liv. Um, and the question um, kind of relates to this is uh, regarding the structure piece demonstrated by you, would it also be valid that each stage exports data from the dagger call and put files back into the host Jenkins machine if required? Absolutely valid. Um, and I think that there will be a future version of this demo where we'll actually show artifacts floating around because right now my pipeline's a little bit silly because it's literally just grabbing standard out and um, and like, like the end result is I'm publishing a container to a registry, which is, which, which, which is valid and fine. But I think that just showing standard out is like, it's kind of sad because it just doesn't show you the actual power and, and purpose of Dagger. So, um, one core idea of Dagger is that we are giving you these lovely new primitives to work with. So in a traditional CI system, you have two primitives, you have your standard out and you have your exit code. And your pipeline is basically um, continue while the exit code is zero is more or less how every pipeline in the world works. With Dagger, your, your pipeline becomes a series of artifacts kind of moving around um, your system. And those are things like files, directories, containers, um, services, et cetera. And I think that um, building a pipeline with the idea um, that the end result is going to be some artifact that I'm going to deliver to some place, whether that's a, a file um, that I'm going to go publish to a registry or a container that I'm publishing to Docker Hub, or, you know, even like a, a coverage report that um, I want to have on the Jenkins host. Those are all, those are all valid um, outputs and much more realistic outputs than just, you know, getting the standard out um, at, at, at the end. And, um, and then similarly, the inputs into subsequent steps might be those very same artifacts. So the, so the fact that you're now working with these real primitives rather than just um, saying, you know, hopefully there's a file here when the next step runs really allows you to write like resilient, testable, uh, elegant pipelines that are based around the physical artifact that's being created rather than just uh, like the idea of the artifact or uh, a, a Boolean ending code. Thank you.